Hello, everybody. My name is Alexander Kazina, aka Kozvir, and I'd like to cordially invite you to another installment of my Pokemon Platinum No Items Allowed in Battle Nuzlocke run. You can catch the show you're currently watching live on twitch.tv slash Live every Monday and Thursday at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And when you're done with that, you can catch up on my previous broadcasts on YouTube, where they publish as VODs every Wednesday and Saturday. There we go. We nailed it. All right, without further ado, let's go ahead and let's jump right into tonight's stream. Uh, this is going to be a little bit more of a slower paced stream compared to some of my previous streams on account of the fact that uh, last time around, we tried our absolute darndest to make a little bit of headway here in the ghost type gym. Uh, and we discovered that we were very, very, very severely uh, under leveled and underpowered compared to the uh, ghostly horrors that await us in this gym. So, we are going to be spending plenty of time making sure that our team is sufficiently leveled up so we don't get creamed by the gym leader. Uh, hello to Tuples1. I hope that you're having a good evening, uh, good sir or madame. Uh, I'm assuming it's sir, but I don't want to assume. Never assume. Um, so, real simple, real easy. Uh, what we're going to do right here and right now is we are going to quickly scour our PC box just to see whether or not uh, the team that we currently have on hand is the best possible team that we can uh, take with us into the upcoming Ghost Gym battle. Uh, and then we will kind of decide from there, do we want to, you know, uh, how much time we want to kind of spend leveling up, getting our team in tip top shape for said battle. Um, Oh, sorry to hear about that, Tuples. Well, hopefully, you know, hopefully my stream will provide you with a little bit of, you know, a relieve, a reprieve, as it were, from the kind of day to day that, uh, you know, might get you down. Um, so most of the Pokemon hanging out in the box right here, I don't think they're going to be especially useful uh, in the upcoming gym battle. Um, but uh, but uh, we do have Geodude. And we do have Eevee. Now, the thing about Geodude uh, is that he might not specifically have moves that are super effective against Ghost-type Pokemon, but he is part Rock-type, and that is going to be very effective against the Drift Blim, I want to say, that the Gym Leader is going to have. Eevee, on the other hand, this guy can actually evolve into all manner of interesting, unique, and different Pokemon. The only thing is that on my previous stream, I was talking about how you know, it might be worthwhile to transform Eevee into a Leafeon. Because that's typically not an Eevee illusion that I tend to use a whole lot. But uh, Leafeon probably won't be super useful against this particular battle, considering that she's going to have both, um, like, again, Drift Blim and uh, Haunter slash Gengar, you know, two Pokemon that are super effective against grass type Pokemon. Uh, I'm going to check my bag real quick to see what kind of stones I have in it. Um, I've been doing pretty okay tuples. You know, I am continuing to kind of truck along in my day-to-day -day, day job, continuing to, you know, have fun here and there playing video games as we, you know, barrel closer and closer into ye old Halloween season. I've been uh, working busy. Uh, I've been busy working, rather. I, I, I've been working busy if I'm Yoda and I speak backwards. Uh, I've been busy working on uh, a little Halloween Discord party that I'm going to be having uh, on the official Discord of the Comedy Button, uh, which is a podcast that I listen to and have a lot of fun with. Um, and yeah, I actually, it's funny, like we're basically a week out from Halloween at this point, like literally, it's uh, next Monday. And I have not really done a whole lot of like Halloween decorative stuff, really. Um, not, not that I'm like ever really the big Halloween dude around the house, but. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Um, Tuples one says, what is your day job? I am a uh, quality assurance tester. Uh, and unfortunately, it's not exactly a job that I can really kind of like delve into uh, super deeply about because I am under many an NDA uh, that prevent me from speaking at liberty about what I do. So understand that if I'm a little bit vague about what it is that I get up to during uh, ye daylight hours, it's because uh, I get in a lot of trouble if I talk openly about it. So 
please understand and please forgive me in that regard. Um, but know that it is a, it certainly is a job. I was trying to think like, what's a very vague but reassuring statement I can say about my day job. And yeah, I, I definitely think that I can say that it is a job without getting into any trouble. <laughs> okay. Um, I gotta be honest, like, I have half a mind to maybe, maybe swap out Kyoto and have somebody else train up in his place, but yeah, I don't know. I want to keep Malta and Ottawa in my party because as normal type Pokemon, um, yeah, they're going to be able to uh, entirely be immune to the ghost type gym leader's attacks. We got to keep Montreal in the party. Um, Sydney's actually the one that I'm wondering if maybe I shouldn't keep her in because, I mean, uh, it's just, it's been taking us so long to evolve him into a Roserade, uh, sorry, a Roselia. Um, and, and like, it's not like Roselia is going to be super effective against this particular gym. Um, no, not for food, not, 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 not at all for food, for video games. I'm a video game quality assurance tester. I don't, I've never actually even heard of like a, um, a food quality assurance tester. I didn't, I was, um, completely unaware of the fact that, uh, Boulder here was holding an Everstone, so we're gonna take it off him real quick. Um... Actually, you know what, I am wondering... I wonder if actually maybe I should still stick with Badu, considering that Badu does have access to, like... Because the problem with Boulder is that, yes, he has, like... Yeah, see, this is the thing I was fearing that I'd completely forgotten about. But, uh, Boulder has very, very, very low special defense, so I actually don't think it would be super worthwhile. Yeah, compared to someone like Sydney, for example. Yeah, way higher special defense. Okay, you know what? Sydney's, you know, grass and poison type moves might not be as effective as some of my other teammates, uh, you know, stab moves, but... I think that ultimately our chances will be better served with it, considering that it is that much more of a special defensive tank. Uh, and yeah, I mean, it certainly is, definitely is awesome. Well, and I can say, again, I, I need to be very careful in terms of uh, what I do and don't say. Um, let's see here. By the way, I um, right now I'm looking at uh, my stream and I um I have this like little like square in the corner where uh, I display what it is that everybody is typing in the chat and I notice that whenever somebody speaks up with like a particularly dark uh, colored name uh, it doesn't really do a good job of kind of showing up in the chat box like Tuple's one's name right now is it, it's like close to being indistinguishable from the kind of dark blue-ish background behind it. I wonder, I wonder actually, if I could actually go in right here right now real quick and actually adjust that a little bit on the fly. Give me a second. So without the little kind of darkened piece behind it, it looks like this, but it's a little bit, yeah, it's just, it's, it's a little bit, I would say too much on the bright side. This is it darkened. Uh, let's see, if I go in here, And I, like, reduce the opacity by a little bit. I think that's a little bit better. The problem is, is that there's, like, a shadow effect that I've applied to the text that still makes it a little bit tough to see. And again, it's not like... Uh, it's not like a ton of people are, like, you know, constantly paying attention to that text box and paying attention to these specific names inside of it. All right. Uh, this has been enough of a preamble. We need to get out and begin training and begin grinding and begin getting ourselves psyched up for the upcoming uh, ghost gym battle. The bad news is that unfortunately we can't really... Yeah, we can't really leave town right now. We can't go via that uh, exit and we also can't go uh, via this exit over here. 
Uh, even though there is like a little space that we theoretically could exit by over here, we can't really go by there. So unfortunately, um, we're going to have to start our grind in some of the previous areas that we've explored. Uh, Tuples1 redeemed, uh, I'll draw a Pokemon from memory and asked, can you draw, uh, the Porygon, please? Why, of course. Uh, let's grab my drawing pad real quick. And my one solitary marker, uh, by which I compose all of my lovely Pokemon creations. Let's go and let's switch in our desk camera. There we go. Okay. Uh, once again, I'm going to just be careful when I'm drawing over this because, fortunately, if it uh, hits any of my keys too hard, that might mess up the stream in some unexpected and unfortunate ways. Uh, Vaporeon. Okay. Uh, I'm not going to like add too much background detail on this one. I'm just going to kind of like go straight for the vape itself. Um, Vaporeon's, like, uh, feats are, like, relatively um, basic from what I remember. I remember them just being kind of like these little kind of pudgy things that are sort of sticking out from it, like such. Um, and you got your kind of little... Uh, oh, hold on a sec. Uh, you got your little kind of, like... Um, uh, like, uh, how, how do you call these lines? Like, the lines that indicate that these are claws and not just kind of blobs at the end of its feet. Um, let's go... You know what? Let's go to Vaporeon's head next, because what I remember about Vaporeon's head is there's sort of like this sort of darker patch on top that kind of looks... kind of has this sort of like... like uh, bird's beak shape. And you got Vaporeon's eyes, which are like very kind of small and beady. And then you got the kind of fins on top of Vaporeon's head that uh, extend out in like the various kind of cardinal directions, but not on bottom. Uh, and then what I remember is that there's like a kind of frilly thing around Vaporeon's head that's entirely white. This marker is, does not have as much ink in it as I thought it did. Hold on, I'm going to try to draw it from a little bit more of a an angle so I can get a little bit more out of it. I need to get I need to get a new marker after this. Um, let's see here. Uh, and then I guess we can kind of start drawing the rest of Vaporeon's body. Again, we got another one of the very like basic looking feats over here. And then, oh yeah, the thing about Vaporeon is of course, its body culminates in kind of a long like hooked tail. It's a little bit I don't remember exactly what it looks like. Also, that's a very thin part of its <laughs> tail that I was... That's not intentional, uh, to say the least. Um, I want to say that its tail kind of like has like a trident-ish design like this. Oh, and the other thing too about Vaporeon is that it kind of has this sort of like ridge back thing going on. And I'm just going to... Yeah, I think there's like a, another like little bit of detail to its ridged back thing. Uh, I'm going to draw another one of the Aporion's feet over here. And yeah, I think that's... Oh, wait, hold on a second. I need I need a mouth, right? Yeah, I need a mouth. Here we go. There we go. I think that's more or less it. Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to present to you Vaporeon. One of the most powerful and enduringly popular of the evolutions, this water-type uh, evolved form of EV is able to completely liquefy itself and transform itself into water for the purposes of both hiding from its opponents and also potentially ambushing them. All right, let's go and let's get started with our grind. Whew. I am thinking that we should probably... Hmm, who do we want to level up first? I want to... I like. I really, really want to get around to evolving Sydney soon rather than later. Um, wait a minute, hold on. I just remembered something real important. Real important right here, right now. 
we have the VS Seeker. I had completely forgotten. It's been so many generations of Pokemon where we have not had the VS Seeker be like a an actual average part of the game. But I had completely forgotten that the VS Seeker is in this game. Uh, the VS Seeker, of course, is something that we received at the end of the uh, previous installment of our Platinum Nuzlocke run. Our rival gave it to us. So let's go ahead. Let's take advantage of this. This is going to actually speed up the... Uh, or maybe not. I was about to say this is going to speed up the grinding process by quite a bit now that we're able to rebattle trainers. But if they're not interested in battling us, that's a problem. Hmm. Now, um, Kyoto is not like an especially strong Pokemon, but uh, this is actually one of the instances in which uh, it can actually kind of really prove its metal because it's up against a poison type Pokemon and we have extra sensory. I appreciate it, Tuples. Thank you. Now, what I'm trying to remember is, in this game... Okay, so this, so much like in Fire Red and Leaf Green, the, the um, VS Seeker's battery needs to recharge after you use it. Oh shit, the barrel. Uh, I was not anticipating that we'd encounter this dude around here. The good news is that this guy probably is gonna give us a lot of experience points. Uh, the bad news is that he actually might be one of the more powerful Pokemon that we've had to fight up until this point, even though he is technically just a wild Pokemon. Um, I know what we're gonna do. Hot take, I actually quite like the design of the barrel. I think he's actually one of the... Uh, that's not good. I actually think he's one of the more cool Pokemon uh, introduced in Generation 4. I know everyone's aghast at me saying that because his pre-evolved form, Bidoof, is like such a dislike Pokemon by comparison, such a kind of wool cow of a Pokemon, but this guy's no cow. This guy's a beaver, and beavers are cool. I also think that at some point, at some point, we probably might just need to stop um, trying to kind of level up Malta. I am... Um, Malta is going to level up to level 19 uh, after one more battle. So you know what we're going to do? We're going to have Malta level up to level 19. If it evolves, great. If not, I am uh, removing the experience share from it, and I am letting our the rest of our team just kind of battle as normal. <sighs> I got to say. Excuse me. Um, it's been a few streams now that I uh, switched to having the kind of like um, kind of dual different uh, light bulb colorations on my face with the light bulb on my left side providing a little bit more of a cooler color and the right light bulb on my right side providing a little bit more of a warmer color. And I'm still very, even though it is very simple, I'm actually still very impressed with the effect. I think it, it looks very good and I'm definitely going to be continuing to kind of use this for some time to come. Let me just, real quick, just gonna bring in the big cam view. I mean, it's not as noticeable here compared to when it's a little bit more scrunched down, to be honest, but I still am very, very, very pleased with how it looks. Okay. Um, Encore, Metronome, Charm, Rock Smash. Hmm. Nah, there's really nothing that I that I would want to give up so I could learn Encore, to be honest. Yeah, no evolution, which means that Malta, I'm afraid I'm going to have to take away your experience here for the time being. I don't even like, I don't even remember like what interesting moves it might learn when it evolves into Togetic for that matter, if any.
I feel like these two trainers over here would make for good rematches, but I don't know if our VS Seekers actually charge it up enough. Oh, here we go. That's how it's done. Both these guys wanted a rematch. Well, that's good. I don't know exactly how tough I want to train up my team to be, because uh, eventually at some point we kind of got to just move on with the stream and not worry about being the strongest we possibly could be. What I will say is that I'm probably not going to train up Bronzor to be as strong as he could be on account of the fact that leveling up, leveling him up just seems like it's going to be very, very, very arduous. Um, Sydney, again, I want to continue to try to train him up. Uh, Monferno, definitely train him up quite a bit. Oh, only one Pokemon. Um, Togepi, yeah, Togepi will probably kind of remain as is. So yeah, basically, this upcoming gym battle is largely going to be an affair between these four Pokemon over here, and I think they can probably pull it off. I, um... Rotom is basically going to be reserved for when I have to battle uh, Driftblim, because I can just have him use his Electric-type moves to kind of quickly wear Driftblim down. And if Driftblim uses any, you know, uh, Flying-type moves, obviously they won't do a lot of a lot of damage towards uh, towards Rotom. Um, oh wow, Ottawa about to level up. That's nice. Um, Again, she, uh, I forget what her name is, the name of the gym leader, but she also has a Haunter slash Gengar. I don't remember if it's one or the other. I want to say it's a Haunter. I suspect that for Haunter, I'll probably be okay finishing it off with like Ottawa or Monferno because Haunter and Gengar, they both have pretty weak defense. And so I suspect that those more kind of physically oriented Pokemon will have an easier time against her. Um, now the big question, however, is Miss Magia. So this is the, um, big kind of head of her team Pokemon that she has up her sleeve. I mean, because Miss Magius is not a Pokemon that has a lot of defense going for it either, I suspect that once again, uh, Monferno, oh, and I should probably use, um, one of my repels while I'm in here, actually. In fact, I might need to buy some more repels when I head to my next town. Because again, we're, we're holding off on catching a Pokemon until later on when we kind of know what we want to get out of Mount Coronet's interior section at the very least. I suspect we'll probably split it up between like the interior section and the um, uh, exterior se section. Okay, there's a lot of trainers around here for us to re-battle. Um... Hmm. Yeah, I guess we're I guess we're good in terms of overall health. Um, do we have enough? I'm assuming we have enough VS Seeker uh, steps into recharge it. Oh wow! Look at all those trainers that want a rematch. One one thing that's a little unfortunate is that um, unfortunately, if uh, if you request a rematch from two trainers that previously. Uh, made up a double battle by them both walking towards you. You can't have them rematch you as a double battle. You can only battle them both one-on-one. -on -one. I want to say that this is actually the same hiker from last time around that uh, immediately one-hit KO'd the chop with uh, self-destruct. This time around, however, we do have Mega Drain, so we should be okay unless it has Sturdy. In which case, we might not be okay. Okay, no Sturdy. I actually... I wonder if, the, if like, the early game would even pull a trick like that. Like, have it be that... Um, you're, you're fighting a Hiker, for example. They send out a Geodude or a Graveler. You think that you are going to be able to easily one-hit KO them, but then they hold on with Sturdy and Self-Destruct. That seems like a little bit too, too nasty of a trick for... Uh, early early game Pokemon to pull, to be honest. Okay. 
Uh, Inferno has not been given enough time to shine. That, that's the kind of monkey paw uh, ification of like a lot of the starter Pokemon that you choose on a lot of these runs. And I mean, this is just, you know, my experience, but I feel like typically I'm so concerned about making sure that our entire team is, you know, uh, that there's sort of parity across my entire team in terms of the levels of all my Pokemon that I feel like I tend to hold back a lot on using my starter Pokemon because my starter Pokemon typically tends to be the one Pokemon on my team that is like pound for pound probably the strongest Pokemon at any given point and the Pokemon that's thus earning experience points the fastest. I like that uh, the cry that Pachirisu makes uh, when it's sent out almost sounds kind of like it's saying Pachirisu, like super sped up. Maybe I'm just mishearing it a little bit, but or maybe that's just me like reading into what I want it to sound like it's saying, but it always kind of came across as that. It's too bad, by the way, that it would take like another couple of generations for Pachirisu and a lot of the like Pokemon like uh, Pokemons to get Nuzzle because that's like the perfect electric type move for Pachirisu and all its kin to have. But alas, it would be, still be quite a few gens before they got it. <laughs> I want to say it was the Dene that was the first Pokemon that got it. I'm not certain to be honest. Um. Okay, uh, Sydney. I'm gonna go ahead. There's a little area just north of here where there are some grassy grasses uh, that we can use to level up Badu real quickly. See if we have a Roselia on our hands. Oh, that's another good point. We can probably go to the cycling road and we can probably rebattle some trainers there. Uh, Ponyta, not a Pokemon that typically is super good in terms of matching up against, uh, Grassite Pokemon. But, not a problem, because we can easily switch out to someone else. Someone like, uh, Detroit the Rotom, who's been itching for another battle for quite some time now. Okay, still no evolution. I know that we, you know, previously checked in on Sydney's overall level of friendship in the town over. Again, I know I know that it's supposed to evolve during the day, and it is the day right now. In fact, if we go to the uh, in-game clock on the Poketch. Uh, hold on a sec, we gotta close the menu. Twelve forty-eight, and that's not AM, that's PM. So, yeah, I don't really know. I don't really know what to... I don't really know what to say. Um... Uh, well, whatever. We'll just continue to kind of, like, get XP in here and there. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna switch Ottawa and Minferno to the top of the party, because I am gonna head back into Orberg Town, heal up a little bit, and then I am going to rebattle some people on the cycling road. If it turns out they're actually a little bit under-leveled for where we're at, I'll just...
go back to the previous route I was at a moment ago. The game definitely, like, there are a lot of ways in which I would say that Pokemon Platinum is, like, a pretty well-designed Pokemon game. I think one way in which uh, it's especially well-designed, which we just kind of have discovered over the course of the past few minutes, uh, is that the game totally anticipated that at this point in the game, we'd probably want to rebattle some trainers so as to get our team into working order before facing off against the third gym battle and gave us the experience seeker to do that. And so, sorry, the VS seeker. Again, it's been a little while since we've had the VS seeker in the mainline Pokemon games. Uh, I guess I can probably try doing it here. Unfortunately, it's a little bit difficult on the cycling road to get a ton of interested people all at once. Wow, nobody. Is it... Is it just because it's the cycling road and maybe trainers aren't really interested in rebattling around here? Yeah, here we go. Here we go. I knew I just needed a little push, much like gravity. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and let's give good old Muku Bird a little bit of quality time. There we go. Hold on, a, hold on a quick quick second. Okay, sorry, I got a little bit, I got a little bit quiet and a little bit nervous for a second there because I went and checked uh, how my stream was doing on uh, my stream manager and it said that I was offline. I was like, oh shit. Went and checked OBS. I was still streaming there. All systems were good over there, and so I went ahead, refreshed my stream manager, and ladies and gentlemen, we are still a okay. Ooh, I was really concerned for a second. Like, have I been playing this game and commenting on it for like the past like hour or so? Uh, not hour or so, like half hour or so without anything actually going on on it. Awful. So embarrassing. Hmm. <sighs> Another Starly. I, I do appreciate at least that it seems like they're a little bit more leveled up compared to where they were at previously, but... Uh, you'd think that they would have at least evolved them by this point. Problem is, is that I'm going to beat this one and it's not even... Oh, my bad. I thought it was not. I was not going to level up from this one, but uh, I was sorely mistaken. Um... Hmm. Yeah, I can go ahead. I can give Detroit a little bit of a run for its money. I love Shockwave as a move. I love Detroit, the Rotom, but again, Shockwave's animation in this game takes too much time. Just too much time. forgot once again to get repellent from town but it's okay because we still have the one repellent left in our bag so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna use that uh 
Uh, let's see. I really, I was quite flabbergasted when neither of these two trainers over here wanted to battle me earlier. Let's see if they will be a little bit more motivated to do so now. All right, one out of two is not bad. One out of two is not bad. Um, oh, give me a quick little second. Uh, I just realized I'd had the chat closed for a minute or two. Um, Tuples1 says, I stream you to the TV and it takes about a minute for my message uh, to show up. I was not aware that you were streaming me from your TV. Thank you. I can tell my family and all my future generations and kin to come that I was a TV show because of you. I appreciate that. If we had access to a ghost type move at this point, uh, like an attacking ghost type move, that is, we'd be able to make quick work of Mime Jr. As it stands, we can still, like, <clears throat> take it out pretty quickly, but it's a little bit disappointing that still at this point we don't have any ghost type moves. No ominous winds, no shadow balls. Probably soon, though. Um... I'll go ahead, I'll have uh, Sydney take care of this one. Even though Bonsly is a rock type Pokemon like Geodude and Onyx before, it doesn't really. It, it, something about it just feels off. It doesn't feel like a pure Rock-type Pokémon in the way that those Pokémon feel like Rock-type Pokémon. Something about it is just inaccurate to the true spirit of what a Rock-type Pokémon is supposed to be. Not a problem, Tuples. I hope you enjoy your walk. Maybe you can play some Pokemon Go on your walk. You know, get a little bit of gaming in alongside your exercise. I should probably slowly begin the cycle of leveling up Sydney again. Again, we just need to get it to Roselia. Just need to get it to Roselia, and we will be gravy. kidding me I can't I can't even battle that dude right now why would you do that to me why would you do that to me hold on I'm gonna read <clears throat> excuse me so it doesn't even make sense that you'd be able to do that with trainers you haven't battled yet okay that should be enough all right let's redo this are you fucking kidding me I'm gonna try the I'm gonna try the one hiker and like the black belt dude, which was the thing that got it to work the first time around. We'll see if that works. Aw, oh, you've gotta be fucking kidding me. Come on. Come on, is there like a cooldown after a trainer has been defeated that prevents him from immediately battling me again? 
Is that like a, an, an invisible factor in all of this that I'm not considering that I would have no way of knowing about? Okay. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna try and see if I can actually use the VS Seeker on these two trainers here again. Maybe this time I'll get the the woman who we previously have not yet been able to battle. Maybe she'll come out of the woodwork. I don't remember at what point in the game you gain access to the lucky egg, but I'm hoping it's soon. This game does feature the entire Chansey line because you got Hapini, Chansey, and Blissey. Um, and so it would make sense that this game, you know, would reward that stone, that stone to you sooner rather than later. But I mean, it remains to be seen exactly when it pops up. I don't know what is going on, but my computer is weirdly kind of slow today. It seems like... I think it's just Firefox, actually. Actually, that's something... I don't know what's been going on right now, but... Firefox recently rolled out... Uh, a pretty big, major-ish update. And... I don't know, like... I'm assuming that... Either it updated uh, on my phone as well, and it's been wrecking havoc, or I just, just haven't updated Firefox on my phone yet because Firefox on my phone has been weirdly, really slow. Like, like clockwork, I will go to open it to look at a video and it will like remain frozen for like five seconds, like repeatedly in a row. I don't know what is going on with it. I, I'm gonna, like after the stream is over, I'm legitimately gonna actually, in fact, I don't even have to wait until the stream is over. Where's my phone? When I'm in the middle, hold on a sec, somebody gave me um, a code actually to get uh, Shiny at Ternatus from work uh, because they were a real champ. Um, you may in fact remember them from appearing on a previous episode of the stream. Um, and uh, that nearly fell on the floor. Hold on. Once I get into another battle, I will check on my phone, see if Mozilla Firefox is updated yet. Well. Uh, I, I was kind of hoping I could battle the other woman, but I guess I'll battle this guy again. Um, I can probably actually use Sydney to take on Mime Jr. if I want to. I don't think that Mime Jr. has any psychic-type attacking moves. Man, that is not... I'd forgotten that Mime Jr. actually has, like, pretty good special defense, so... A move like Mega Drain is actually not going to be as powerful against it as you would hope it to be. Okay, so it has Meditate, but that is a move that raises your attack, not special attack. I kind of like... I've always liked the idea of Meditate as a move, but I feel like... Like, I don't feel like enough right Pokemon to actually have access to Meditate. The Pokemon that have Meditate are always Pokemon like 
like Mime Jr. or Alakazam or like specifically like special oriented attackers that don't really can't really make take advantage of meditate all that much. I don't know if it's like if it's meant to be this weird thing of like they give these Pokemon meditate to like give them an opening in case you want to kind of build them into like more of a physically oriented attacker. Uh, let's see. Yeah, it seems like I upgraded to the latest version of Firefox on my phone. It says upgraded six days ago. So I'm going to assume that basically this new version for iPhone is not super well optimized. I'm going to... I'm obviously, I'm not going to uninstall it because I use it for everything, but I hope that they come out with a hotfix sooner rather than later. It could also be, I wonder if maybe it might be a cache thing as well. But like, maybe, maybe I have like, I don't know, too much data built up in my Firefox app and I got to cleanse it a little bit. Uh, uh, I'm going to go ahead. I'm just going to level up Bud you in the grass to the next level, and then I'm going to head back into town. Oh, see that, Bud you? That's what you could be right here, right now, if you just leveled up. Um, I'm probably actually going to have to switch out so someone else will take care of it. Um, Kyoto. Kyoto will take care of this one. Oh, fuck. Man, this is gonna... This is gonna turn into a real slow go if I keep this guy in. So I'm just gonna... I hate having to, like, repeatedly switch out to different Pokémon to take down an opponent because experience points just get spread so thin, but we kind of have to. Maybe this time around we'll get a Bibarel. By the way, I hope that I'm pronouncing its name correctly. In my mind's eye, whenever I try to, like, think about, like, how a Pokemon's name should be pronounced, I always try to imagine Ash from the anime pronouncing it. And, like, it makes way more sense that Ash would be like, All right, Pikachu, attack that Bibarel! As opposed to, All right, Pikachu, attack that Bibarel! That, that doesn't, the latter does not sound like Ash at all. He's way more of a the barrel kind of guy. I mean, at least I think he is. I actually have not watched the dubbed version of Ash in quite some time. I used to be the person, the one person on the internet that was like, you know what, I kind of like them dubbed animes. I'll watch dubbed as opposed to subbed. I especially love dubbed Pokemon. And then it became, I generally watch subbed animes, but I will still watch Pokemon dubbed. Now, even Pokemon I watch subbed. I am a monster, and I am sorry about it. Ah, really? Well, I can always head into town, and I can actually ask that one woman to see what she thinks about my bud to you. We actually have... we have a few items in our bag, actually, that we can probably feed it to potentially up its... Uh, like, overall friendship with us? I should probably check that out. <sighs> okay, so it's quite friendly with you. It's, you know, it appreciates being around you. Now, how does Malta feel by comparison? Uh, seems like they're both kind of on the same wavelength. Let's see. Montreal has been with us since the beginning. It hasn't had the Sooth Bell attached to it, but I mean, it's been, you know, with us in all sorts of adventures. Let's see here. Okay. So they're both, they're all three of them are actually kind of on the same wavelength.
I'm going to go ahead. I am going to real quick nab some more hit points from the old Pokemon Center. And then I am going to grab some repels. go. I was really concerned for a second going through there that they were not going to have any repels. And there we go. We are repelled up. with next i guess i yeah i should probably go and focus on leveling up detroit if he's like a few levels away from learning ominous wind then we probably should not keep him from learning such okay let's see oh fuck I was about to say, let's see if we can get these two guys to battle us once more, but... Hold on, we gotta go and... Uh, should I even... You know what? We have Uproar, actually. We'll just use Uproar. Uh... uh maybe I should not have bothered with doing this, to be honest. Man, when you've seen all four moves that the wild Pokemon you're battling has, you know that you've spent too much time battling it. Alright. Uh, you know what? Let's use a berry this time. I'm sure that we have a berry that can heal our paralysis. Yes, we do. Nope, nothing from either of them. All right, this time around, I'm going to try the two hiker dudes again, see if I can actually get it this time around. Oh, wow. Holy shit, we got the mother load. Also, I did not realize up until now, if you are someone that we have not yet battled, they will actually only have uh, the one question mark over their head. But if you're actually somebody that we have battled, they'll have two question marks. I did not notice that detail before. Good job, Game Freak. Mm. The only thing about these two guys is, of course, if they have ground type Pokemon, there isn't a whole lot we can do. Actually, you know what? Uh, we, we actually should have probably kept out Rotom for this guy, because Rotom could have Taken on Nose Pass without much problem. Once I get everyone up to level 25, I'm going to take another crack at the gym to see if we're that much closer to being able to get through it. I think that that will probably... I want to say that Gardenia, her strongest Pokemon, was like level 25. So I feel like us being at level 25 for this one, definitely we're going to be in a bit of a better position. Yeah, unfortunately, we're not... Yeah. I think we're gonna have to swap out for this one. Uh, I feel bad using Sydney so soon after leveling it up, but I mean, it is the cheapest way for us to get through this, so. 
Wow, look at that. That was a very, very respectable amount of uh, hit points that I actually restored from that. I feel like it's very seldom that like the healing element of Giga Drain is actually all that useful for us. Okay. Uh, you know what? Ottawa's not been given enough of a chance to get some battles in. Let's switch it to the front. I wonder if... Yeah, we can get that other fourth hiker in here. Is there anyone else, though? I know there is that one... Oh, wow. I forgot about this dude down here. And you have that battle girl over there. Let's see if we can get these three guys all at once. Get some fresh new battles in here that we haven't really done yet. Okay, only that guy. All right, well... So that's how it's going to be. Uh, the first Pokemon that that dude has is the one Geodude that has self-destruct. So we're going to have to switch to Badoo for the first battle again. Unless we risk accidentally killing one of the Pokemon on our team. I suspect that Bronzor actually could probably handle it if we needed it to. But like, I don't know. It's not a really a risk I want to take. Especially because Bronzor could be more useful kind of later on down the road. Uh, Nose Pass, on the other hand, I am going to actually send out Detroit for this guy to make up for the fact that the last time we were facing off against Nose Pass, uh, Detroit did not get his due. We still have not been able to rebattle that one hiker dude over there, so let's just real quick take some quick little steps. Um, actually, we have a step counter app over here, don't we, right? We can actually use this to... Yeah, it is a step counter app. For whatever reason, I completely forgot about its existence. We can actually use this uh, to quickly check on the fly whether or not we've walked the sufficient amount of steps for our VS tracker to be completely recharged. All right. Wow, nobody. Fucking nobody. Nobody wanted to show up. Nobody wanted to step up to the plate. Nobody wanted to be a man. Fucking completely guileless idiots. I'm kidding, of course. They're not guileless idiots. They're guileless Bidoofs. Yeah, I went there. I went there. You're going to be a coward, I'm going to call you a Bidoof, and there's nothing, nothing that you can do about it. Do I have to maybe, like, exit and re-enter the route? Let's see if that works. Nope, nope, wrong. Uh, 
Ah, are you kidding me? Freaking trainers just don't want to play ball. Well, somebody is using our blender upstairs, but for what reason, I don't know. <laughs> oh, here we go. Finally, finally somebody who wanted to step up to the plate. Uh, I'm going to have Montreal do this one. Ooh, you know what? If Montreal had access to Thunder Punch right here, he'd be able to handle these dudes, but he does not. So I'm going to actually switch into Detroit. And I was just talking about having Detroit fight some more battles. I don't know what is going on. For a second, I was like, maybe I can body these dudes. But then I was like, no, no, no. You, you got to be careful around Boyzell. This guy will fuck your day up. Lo and behold, I mean, I think that he's a better physical attacker than he is a special attacker, but... Yeah, that water gun. That water gun would not have been pleasant for Munferno. Oh, Gligar. Another Pokémon that I actually would have loved to have gotten. I don't know how useful Gligar would have been, though, in the upcoming battle that we're going to have. Hmm. I mean, I suspect, I mean, him being part ground type would have made him resistant towards um, the poison type moves that Haunter might throw our way. Um, but the problem is, is that the gym is a little bit more like special oriented and Gligar is like known more for its physical defense. So I suspect it probably would not have been like that great either way. But yeah, check this out. Look at how many uh, flame wheels it's taking to take down Gligar. This guy is one resistant face hugger scorpion dude. Whew. Oh, wow, we are actually really close to leveling up. Also, this trainer, he had three Pokemon in a row. Boizel, Gligar, and Lucio that are like bona fide, like hashtag real Pokemon that actually give us a lot of experience points. Uh, I'll, I'll stick in with Montreal, but if I actually take too much damage here, I'll probably switch out to Badu. Oh yeah, we're good. Maybe, maybe I... Maybe I'm like overshooting things a little bit in terms of the amount of experience points I'm going to get from defeating Lucio, but... Level 25, here we come. Okay. Uh, that means that all we got to do now is focus on getting Detroit and Ottawa to level 25. You know what? You know what, ladies and gentlemen? Let's actually head back to the cycling road. Because I think that we're going to find some worthwhile battles over here that will actually be a little bit easier for Rotom um, and Star Arabia compared to the other members of our team. Now, we weren't previously able to get these two trainers to battle us earlier, but well, I guess things weren't different this time. All right. I believe that these two trainers, on the other hand, we were able to battle earlier. All right, just she wants a rebattle. Okay, well, um, I suspect she's probably going to have fire type Pokemon, so I'll probably be okay with Rotom.
All right. We know how this is going to go, so I'm just going to speed this up. Again, I don't love using speed up because, of course, the game's sound quality gets all garbled and whatnot, but this is one of those instances where it's like, are you really missing a whole lot by us quickly zooming through this battle? Not really. IMO. All right. The thing about Cycling Road is that these steps are basically done for us. All right. Still, these two trainers still don't want to battle us. Okay. Let's see. Hold on. I want to make sure I can get the two of them both in frame. All right. Let's do this. Okay, we got one out of two. Starlies, here we come. I, I talked about this on my previous stream, but whenever I am about to say Starly or Staravia's names, I always, almost always default to accidentally saying Mukuru or Mukubird. I would say probably Mukubird more than Mukuru. It's just that, that brief period of time where I only knew most of the Pokemon in Diamond and Pearl by their Japanese names that just completely tripped me up. Can't forget about Menene, which was, of course, Mime Jr. Uh, Manula, uh, which was Weavile. And what was Bonsley? I think it was Uzochi. That sounds right. Oh, hold on. We've not tried battling this dude again. Or that dude. Uh, let's see if I can get these two. Uh, are you kidding me? Four? Ah, uh, why do I got to do that? Okay, here we go. Uh, yeah, I think we're good. I'll just uh, I'll, I'll have uh, Detroit fully level up via battling a wild Pokemon later, or maybe I'll switch him in. We'll see. This might not be a, a good matchup for Ottawa, actually. I will switch in. Good old Rotom. I feel like... I feel like if I could count the amount of times that Detroit has been paralyzed over the course of the past couple of streams that he's been on, I would be able to make a pretty little bit of money off of him. It is weird how much he's been paralyzed. Ah, oh, really? All right, one more attempt, and then after that, I'm going to switch him out because I don't want him dying to bite. <laughs> Here we go. All right, level 25, baby, let's go. Ominous Wind. Nope, no Ominous Wind. Okay. I still I am super curious what Pokemon these two trainers have that I have forgotten about since first battling them on the previous stream. Well, at least we're going to see what one of them has. Here we go. Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, this right here, right now, is how it's done. Ponyta, Ponyta, and only Ponyta. Nothing more, nothing less. Thank you, by the way, to everybody over on YouTube for turning that short in which I talked about Ponyta's um, insane experience yield uh, into such a phenomena like that video uh, actually really popped off. So thank you to everybody. 
Uh, another Shinx. I'll, I'll, I'll swap out to Munferno this time around. It is too bad that our original Luxio ended up dying because his bite could have actually been really useful in this upcoming gym battle. And his electric type moves too because we would have been able to put a dent in Drifblim. How many? Oh, all right. All right. 20, 26. That's a little bit more respectable. If it was going to be like another like, oh, you got to walk like three steps kind of situation, that would have been so, so upsetting. I actually was hoping that we would not battle this dude again because... This dude, unfortunately, only has Pokemon that we're not very strong at battling with Staravia in hand. It's okay. We can give... We certainly can afford to give Sydney the chance to level itself up a little bit more, you know? Actually pretty close to leveling up at this point. Who knows? Maybe 26 will finally be the moment where we hit peak evolution. Uh, let's see here. Let's see here. Just on the off chance, I don't remember what Pokemon this dude has, but if he has on the chop or like a fighting type Pokemon. Having uh, this dude at the front of the party will actually work out in our favor. Well, guess not. Yeah, I really did not hit the jackpot on this particular hiker. I thought maybe he'll have like a uh, Machop or something, you know, one fighting type Pokemon to help round out his team of otherwise ground rock Pokemon, but he most definitely did not. You know what? I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna switch out to Montreal for this one. Oh no! You fucking bitch! Piece of shit! Definitely not getting clipped out for social stats for certain. Man, the last time we, we went through our entire Pokemon Leaf Green run without our starter dying. Oh, fuck. Fuck! 
We went our entire leaf green run without our starter dying. Um, but we were not able to replicate that this time around. Uh, fuck. What sucks is that that Pokemon also is like, it's one of the few only like fire type Pokemon we can get so far on this run. It's also one of the only fighting type Pokemon that we'll be able to get for quite some time to come. Uh, still no evolution. You've got to be fucking kidding me. Well, we just lost a valuable asset in our upcoming fight with the Ghost-type Gym Leader. To be fair, like, you know, I kind of chose um, Chimchar, uh, expecting that it would give my run a little bit more of a challenge factor to it, because he's definitely, like, the least bulky of the three um, Generation 1 starters. Hey, Tuples, you missed a... Uh, a very um, unfortunate uh, incident, which is that uh, Montreal the Inferno is now dead. Look at that. Can you imagine it? But that's just what happened, unfortunately. And if you can believe it, despite being at level 26, um, Sydney the Badoo has not yet evolved. How much longer? All right, this guy's pretty close to getting to full evolutionary status. Let's keep going. Oh shit, I forgot to use the repel around here. Uh Okay, well, unfortunately, we can't use Machop in the upcoming Ghost Gym, but you know what? We just lost ourselves a prominent fighting-type Pokémon. I certainly am not displeased about potentially getting another one back. Let's go ahead and let's catch this dude. I was really concerned about using the Repel in this particular cave because I didn't want to, like, accidentally end up catching like, you know, like a Zubat or a Chingling or, you know, something useless like that. Here we go, let's go. What do we want to call this guy? Again, we got to name these guys after city names. Uh, what would be a good city name for this dude? Dare I call him Quebec after Quebec City? Let's go ahead and let's actually, you know what? It's speaking to me right now. I'm going to call him Quebec and if I have enough space, no. I don't have enough space to do Quebec City, so I'm just going to call him Quebec. If I encounter another Machop, though, I will definitely use... Nope, not another Machop. Let's see if we can finally get this woman to rebattle us. Right after we defeat this Bidoof, by the way.
All right, here we go. Finally. I always, for whatever reason, I've assumed for the longest period of time that she is... Oh, no, wait, she is an aroma girl. Oh. Oh, and she has a little, like, Pokeball animation thing of a Bob that you can get from the contest hall. Uh, hello to Claw underscore of underscore the underscore undead, or just Claw of the Undead, as I'd imagine you uh, like being called. Thank you for tuning into my stream. I hope that you're enjoying yourself so far. And here we go. Ottawa's at level 25. Not much of a major boost, though, outside of just a little bit of an increase in attack. All right. And that's it for Combi. Goodbye to Combi. After this upcoming gym battle, I should probably consider scouring my PC box and, like, seeing if maybe I can get a little bit of mileage out of, like, my second Shinx, for example. I'm gonna go ahead and heal up first, so... Uh, I'm having an okay enough time with the, today's stream. You know, it's been a little bit more uh, chill compared to some of my prior streams because a lot of this stream has just consisted of me leveling up my team so that I can get them into uh, ship-ready shape for the upcoming Ghost-type gym battle. Only problem is that uh, Monferno, our starter, uh, died along the way to an unfortunate magnitude from a Geodude. That rhymed and that made it sound more whimsical than it actually was, but I assure you when I say that, it was most definitely not whimsical. Uh, what do I want to use first here? Let's go ahead. Let's actually, I'm going to give Detroit the chance to kind of make his first impression first. All right, we battled her. Right, she's the trainer that had the Miss Trevis. Uh, did we battle him? Oh, I forgot. This is, like, way more expansive uh, of a gym layout than I thought it was going to be. All right, now that we're at level 25 across the board, all of us are like pretty, uh, how to say, like we're actually quite a bit stronger than what it appears that the competition is going to throw at us. But we got to be careful. If Miss Drevis is as strong as it was previously, we might be in trouble. go. Another trainer. Uh, Claw of the Undead says, quick question, what is your fave Pokemon? And if you could be a gym leader, what type of Pokemon would you choose? Um, my favorite Pokemon is Agron. I'm a huge fan of the hulking Stage 3 Pokemon from Generation 3. I always have found his design to be very cool. I think that his, um, his 3D model in the more recent 3D Pokemon games has not really done his, his sort of bulking physique justice, but I, I love a lot of the 2D sprites of him from the Gen 3 through 5 games. Um... And if I could choose to be a gym leader, I mean, most definitely following up on uh, Agron's steel rock typing, I would definitely be a steel type gym leader. Agron would most definitely be the strongest dude in my party, and I don't know what the rest of my team would be made up of, but it would be other cool, powerful little steel type Pokemon that are going to take you for a ride, much like that Marvel vs. Capcom song.
I'm assuming I'll be okay, even though we're battling a hunter now, I'm assuming I'll still be a-okay. I gotta say, I like a lot of the, um, the sprite work in Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum. I don't love this Haunter sprite. I feel like it doesn't do a very good job of capturing Haunter's iconic silhouette, to be honest. Oh, here we go, another Miss Trevis. This time around, I'm actually gonna send out Ottawa. I want to say that Miss Trevis has weaker defense and it has special defense, so Ottawa's wing attack should be able to do a bit of damage towards it. What I don't remember is, does the Miss Magius that we're going to be battling at the end of this um, gym in here... Also, look at that, look at that. Even though I used wing attack, um, which I theorize would be the most powerful attack I could use in this instance, it's still going to be a 3 KO. Miss Magius unexpectedly way more powerful than it has any right to be. So, Claw of the Dead, you say that your favorite is Haxorus, and that you would choose to be a Poison-type gym leader. Would you want to have, like, a like a regional alternative version of Haxorus that is part Poison-type, so that you can kind of incorporate that into your gym as well? Or would you maybe be, like, like the kind of rarely seen gym leader that is Poison-type, but uses, like, a Haxorus on their team that is just a normal Dragon-type Pokémon? just to kind of, like, spice things up and keep their opponents on their toes. I, I would actually... It would be interesting... I, I can't conceptualize in my head, what would a Poison-type Haxorus even look like? That would actually be kind of interesting. I always thought that it was a little bit... Like... I feel like... It was a little bit kind of lame that Haxorus and his whole evolutionary line was just like pure dragon typing and nothing else. I always thought that was a little bit of a missed opportunity. And what's weird, right, is that you have like the Axew Haxorus dragon line in Generation 5, but then you also have um, the, um, what is it, like the Dino. Uh, High Dragon line in Generation 5, and it's like you have two different, like, regional dragons. Like, why is it that you have two of them? Was it was one not enough? That always was weird to me. I should probably... I want to... Uh, I'll see if I can level up uh, but due to, like, level 27 before we take on the gym battle, just to give it a little bit more of a fighting chance. Because clearly Ottawa um, and Detroit are, like, pretty good in terms of overall damage output and levels. But, yeah. I think that Badu could... could deserve receiving, like, one final little boost before we head into the final battle. So I suspect we'll probably be able to level up Ottawa to 27 as well. Gotta say, a lot of gym leader, sorry, gym trainers uh, for this particular gym that we're in. Oh, shit. Well, that was uh, not my intention. Okay. Well, I think I'm going to go out on a limb and say that I think we more or less got all of the gym trainers that we can battle in this gym. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to quickly skedaddle to the Pokemon Center. Heal up our Pokemon, and we'll do just a final little bit of grinding before the gym battle proper. Because we cannot, cannot afford to have this end in flames. Because if it does, like... <laughs> oh man, we have so much more grinding ahead of us. If we don't just decide to end the run right then and there. Oh, whoops, my mistake. Thank you, Claw of the Undead. I appreciate it. Uh, I 
guess uh, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to try to rebattle those two hiker dudes up there. I guess depending on who decides to rebattle and who doesn't, we'll, we'll figure out who we want to put at the front of the party next. Actually, closing uh, closer to leveling up soon, sooner than I thought we would be. I've not I also had a sip of water in quite some time, so let's go ahead and let's do that. What's my strategy going to be in the upcoming gym battle that I'm going to be facing off against? Well, I got Sydney, I got Ottawa, and I got Detroit over here. Detroit, uh, my Rotom, my lovely, lovely Rotom, uh, who unfortunately is weak towards Ghost-type moves, uh, will be taking care of Drift Blim. Um, I don't remember if the upcoming gym leader, if she has a Haunter or a Gengar, but either way, Haunter slash Gengar will be taken care of by uh, Saravia because he'll be able to inflict massive physical damage uh, that they can be affected by with wing attack. Uh, and then for uh, Miss Magius, sorry, I, I often forget that Pokemon's name. Uh, for Miss Magius at the end, I suspect I will probably lead with Sydney. I'll probably see if I can paralyze it to start off the bat. Um, and then either I'll stay, I'll stay in with, uh, I'll stay in with Sydney and see if I can kind of whittle it down with Mega Drain, or if not, I'll try and find the opportunity to safely switch into someone else. A an X factor that I haven't really talked about a whole lot is I do have, uh, Kyoto the Bronzor on my team. He's a little bit underleveled, but he is pretty defensive, and he does have access to Confuse Ray, so worse comes to worse, I could actually switch in him and have him, like, potentially whittle um, whittle down Miss Magius with, a, like, a combination of Confuse Ray and Extra Sensory as well, assuming that she's already paralyzed to begin with. But it's a little bit of a, you know, risky strategy. That's that's what I'm currently thinking. That's my kind of current strategy, as it were. Wow, that was a very low experience yield. I apologize for that. I'm just going to go up and down a little bit just so that we got our proper steps in. All right. VS Seeker, do not fail me now. Our, you've got to be fuck One? Fucking shit. All right, VS Seeker, don't feel, fail me now. Ah, uh, all right, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to go back to that route that we were at on the other side of the cave. Oh, wait, hold on, hold on. The barrel might be here to save the day. I honestly don't really need to. I don't feel like I really need to level up. Oh, shit. If that had been a the critical hit i my day would have been fucking ruined right there no joke that would have been awful i 
I'm I'm really threading this needle real close, but uh, do I want to be? Do I want to throw caution to the wind though? Uh, fuck, I don't want to throw caution to the wind. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna switch into the Detroit. Who, what? Uh, conveniently, is not hurt by. Oh, but he was using water gun. Uh, that's disappointing. And there goes the barrel. Uh, another the barrel. Okay. Let's see. You know what? At this point, how far, how close are we to leveling up Ottawa? Oh, pretty close, actually. You know what? I will switch in Ottawa. And I suspect I'll probably only have to do one or two more wild battles after this to get Ottawa to 27, which is where we need to get it to. So, yeah, we should be good. Actually, this this will actually work out very well for us. Even better if Badoo finally decides to get off its ass and evolve into Roselia. Like, that'll ever happen. Every single time, every single time it levels up, I'm like, this is going to be it. This is finally going to be the moment where it levels up. Never happens. Is it like, I, I know I previously already read about this, about how it only evolves with high friendship in the sunlight. Is it like, like, like early in the morning? Let's check good old Bulbapedia again. It evolves into Roselia when leveled up with high friendship during the day. Okay. Guess we just kind of got to keep at it. Okay, well, I guess that's that. Let's go ahead, let's get healed up at the Pokemon Center, and let's head into the Hearthrome Ghost-type gym battle. That was quite the grinding session, but I think that we are quite prepared to take on the looming threat that rests ahead of us. I don't know yet what I'm going to evolve the Eevee into. I um, I would love to evolve it into a Glaceon, but the problem is, is that it's, it's going to take us so long to get to the point in the game where we can evolve it into a Glaceon. I would actually lo like genuinely love to evolve it into a Leafeon, because I feel like Leafeon is a cool Pokemon that I don't typically use a lot in them Pokemon games. Um, uh, problem with Leafeon is, I, I feel like if I'm gonna eventually evolve my Budu into Roselia and keep Roselia and then Roserade around on my team, like I don't know if there's like much room for. Um, that's not the proper route. I don't know if there's like much room for like another prominent Grass type Pokemon. You know what I mean? Um, and I mean, I guess like. So, like, obviously you have the three original Gen 1 Eeveelutions. You have, you know, Jolteon, Flareon, Vaporeon. I actually would not mind uh, Flareon or Vaporeon. Jolteon is just a little bit too much of a glass cannon to really be worthwhile. Um, fuck, I'm... 
<laughs> How are you supposed to do this again? You gotta go to, like, the red mats, but they're all red. Uh, let's see, your triangle. What does the other one say? Uh, square and circle. This is a Nintendo game, sir. It's not a PlayStation game. Um... Okay, well, let's see. I guess we'll probably try to aim for, like, the next triangle we can come across. So, yeah, I'd be okay with Vaporeon or Flareon. Uh, Flareon especially, considering that... A star, interesting. So it's a star, a heart, and a moon. And what's over here? And a circle. Or a target. Wow, all right, here we go. We got it. Obviously, saving in a Nuzlocke run doesn't really help all that much, but... Just for the heck of it, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do it. Um, and of course, probably I would be remiss not to mention the other two evolutions uh, that we have available at our disposal, uh, those being Umbreon and Espeon. Thing is, is right now I'm really quite frustrated with how long it's taking Badu to evolve, which is a Pokemon that evolves with high friendship. So like, I don't know if I want to waste that much time on Eevee just to evolve it, maybe possibly potentially into an Espeon. That's going to die real quick because it's such a glass cannon. I think it just makes more sense to get like a Vaporeon, a Flareon, or potentially a Leafeon out of it. So one of those three. One of those three. All right. Cross our fingers for to die. Let's do this. So is the idea... She's French, right? So is the idea that she's from the Galar region uh, from Gen 6. No, wait a minute. No, it's not the Galar region. That's Gen 8. Also, hold on a second. Duskull? I don't remember this Pokemon at all being on her team. I guess... I'm guessing that... It, uh, I must be remembering her team from Pokemon Diamond and Pearl. Uh, hold on a second. Real quick. Pokemon Gen 6 region. I have to figure this out before I go crazy. Kalos. There we go. Not a very French sounding name, to be honest. I feel like Galar is actually like a, a better like French sounding name. Of course, uh, you are correct, Clav the Undead, that all the Pokemon on my team can gain more friendship just by running around. But like, it's not super interesting in terms of stream content, if I gotta be honest. Okay, well, ah, fuck. I was not anticipating getting burned right off the bat, but at least he's taken care of. All right, Ottawa is probably going to be more or less out of commission for the rest of the battle, which is not good. Um, and I was kind of counting on him to take out Haunter. Hmm, what do I want to do here? What do I want to do? I suspect... You know what? Let's go ahead. Let's switch into Kyoto. Now let's see if I can uh, inflict some status afflictions on it to slow things down. Also, it only has... Okay. So I thought it had... I thought she had Drift Blim, Haunter, and Miss Magius. I was clearly mistaken. She actually only has uh, Duskull Haunter and Miss Magius, which, I mean, it's, uh, things are actually not going quite as according to plan as I thought they would be, but... Hey, uh, all right, let's see here. Oh, shit, Shadow Claw, but that's... Ah, uh, fuck. Well, good thing is that we won't take a lot of... Uh, that, that was more damage than I thought it would be. All of a sudden, I'm beginning to regret maybe sending this dude out. Um... Good thing about Haunter's Shadow Claws, it's not like doing a lot of damage because he's not like a very physically oriented Pokemon, but... Hmm... Do I go for extra sensory so I put whoever I'm going to switch into next into a better position to attack him? Or do I go for Hypnosis? Or do I go for Confuse Ray? 
Fuck it, I'm gonna go with Hypnosis. Let's see if two times the charm will do this. Ah! Fucking shit. <sighs> I'm just gonna stick in for one attack. Uh, come on, Ottawa, just get one hit in. All right, well, it's not bad, but like... <laughs> I am curious, though. Uh, Hunter could have used so many moves there, but instead of using an attacking move, he chose to use Confuse Ray. Is it possible that he doesn't have any, like, notable, like, attacking moves outside of Shadow Claw? Because if that's the case, I want to see if I can actually do a little bit of damage with Tokyo. Ooh, okay, Sucker Punch. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, so he has Hypnosis, Sucker Punch, Shadow Claw, and uh, Confuse Ray. Okay, well this is going to be a little bit more slow going than I thought it would be, but if that is what Haunter's moveset is made up of, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to spend a little bit of time seeing if I can whittle him down with Tokyo's Growl. Because that will actually make it so that it is... Uh, that'll make it much easier for me to switch in with one of the other Pokemons on my team. Uh, Claw of the Undead says, Well, actually, today I was uh, playing Pokemon Platinum 2. I wanted to evolve my Togepi, and I went from 30 to 33k to 55k steps. And I get that you don't want to do it because it is indeed boring as heck. Of course, like, Togepi to Togetic, like, that is a pretty major upgrade, you know, Bud to Roselia, another major upgrade. Generally, these Pokemon that, you know, evolve via friendship, they evolve into some pretty powerful evolved forms, but like, yeah, it's, um, it, it's quite a bit of effort as I'm rediscovering on this stream. Oh, seems like we had already lowered its attack enough. Oh, you're right, because because of uh, Ottawa's Intimidate. Okay. All right. I suspect we will probably be okay. You know what I'm wondering? You know what I'm wondering over here is if I were to switch in Malta instead, because Malta has access to Metronome, but maybe it would be actually better if I actually switched into... Malta for Miss Magus, because I can actually reliably put it to sleep that way. Or maybe I should do it here. Yeah, you know what? Let's do it here. Why not? If it gets a little bit hurt because of confusion, I mean, that's not that big of a deal, right? I was not expecting the two random normal type Pokemon on my team that don't have any <laughs> attacks that I can use to directly damage my ghost type opponents uh, would play such a big part in this battle. And also, I was not expecting that I would spend this much time battling a freaking Haunter. This is not according to plan at all, but you know what? I'm having fun. Alright, I'm gonna do Metronome just to waste uh, the one turn. Oh, and I'm put to sleep. Fuck. Uh, you know what? Uh, I know that I am dragging this battle out way longer than it has any right to be. I kind of want Togepi to be awake for eventually when we have to battle Miss Magus. I'm actually going to go ahead and I'm going to stick into this battle. 
and wait for Haunter to eventually fall, to fall asleep itself, with me still being awake. Oh. What are we gonna do with Metronome? Oh, shit! Uh, haha! Uh -huh. That was a, a bit fortuitous on our part. Um... It would be so f oh, are you fucking kidding me? Every single time that Haunter uses Hypnosis, it is a, like, 110% accuracy move. Every single time that I have used Hypnosis, it is, like, a 0%, like, not 0%, like, negative 500 accuracy move. Oh, are you fucking kidding me? Alright. Uh, it, it's going to be my luck that I, the moment I switch in Detroit, Hunter is immediately going to wake up from sleep. Oh, here we go. Lucky break. Turns out the 110% accuracy that I initially assumed it had was uh, not all that accurate. Wow, everybody on the team participated in that battle except for uh, Miss Magus. Okay, here's where we got to make a decision for ourselves. Do we potentially um, lower uh, Miss Magus's ability to attack completely uh, by sending in Malta and having it potentially put it to sleep with Yawn? Or do we send in Sydney and potentially paralyze it? I'm thinking that... I'm thinking it might be more worthwhile to put it to sleep because if it has access to psychic type moves that's it for sydney but then again paralysis is gonna be way quicker and it will be something that will persist for the rest of the battle we've not given sydney the chance to attack yet so you know what i'm gonna go ahead and i'm gonna send in sydney this is a thrilling gym battle i was not expecting this to be so fun All right, it has Confuse Ray, which would lead me to believe that um, it probably does not have any Psychic-type attacking moves, because if it did, it probably would have led with one of those. Uh, it did more damage than I was anticipating. It's not... Ah, fuck. Well, so much for Sydney. Are you fucking kidding me? It could have survived that? Fucking shit. All right. Like, that was, like, that right there, like, the one-two punch of me both hurting myself in confusion and then getting hit by a critical hit. Like, you can't make this shit up. All right. Yawn. Okay, unless it has a berry on hand that will immediately wake it up from sleep. I think we might got this, but... Hold on. Let me just... I want to just check something real quick. Yeah, okay. This guy has plenty of good special defense. See, here's the thing. Let's check out Sydney's stats real quick. Sydney, 43 special defense. That's pretty high, especially for what is ostensibly a quote-unquote baby Pokemon. It could have 100% survived uh, that psychic type move that it used just a minute ago, but fucking critical hits. All right. Oh, that's it actually has no difference on us because it's yeah, grass type moves still hit us neutrally, but okay. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Ooh, we actually have a lot of options here. We can just immediately start shockwaving it, but we d we could also put it uh, under confusion if we want to cause it some strife. We're also double team. Fuck it, shockwave. Let's not let's not be. Uh, I, I'm searching for the right word here. Let's not be cute. Oh shit. Uh... Mm. 
All right. You know what? I am rebuffing on what I previously said. We are going to be cute. We are going to make sure that this dude has no chance of ever attacking us due to hurting itself in confusion. I appreciate her moxie, but I really hope that it doesn't work in her favor. Come on, come on, don't, 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 fuck you. I might legitimately be screwed now. No joke, I had completely forgotten that it was confused. Ah, uh, man. Uh, shit. Do I stay in with Malta or do I switch out to someone else? Well, I guess I know that we're gonna... If we survive this battle, Tokyo will probably end up being evolved into a grass type. Um... Fuck. What do we do? What do we do? I guess I could... Uh, but it... The problem is, is that I don't want to, like, wait one more turn, have Miss Magus fall asleep, switch out to someone else, and then Miss Magus immediately wakes up. Uh... But at the same time, I don't want to switch into Ottawa and then have Ottawa get hit by one of Miss Magus' moves because it's it snaps out of confusion at the last minute. And then, like, be unable to take it down with Kyoto, who has, like, just no special attack to it talk about. Um, fuck. God damn it. Do I stay in and do I try to use metronome or do I switch out? Fuck. Fuck it. Ottawa, somebody had to take the fall. Ah! Fuck you! I didn't think that she had a special, like, a super potion on hand. That is unfucking fair. No choice. I have to use this, but I suspect it will probably just one hit KO me now. <sighs> I'm assuming that Levitate will make Sand Attack miss, but I have to try something. Oh, don't fucking do that shit on me. Wait, what? I could have used that from the beginning? What the fuck? Oh, man. If I, if I win this battle because of accuracy luck due to confusion... Sorry, due to, um... Due to sand attack... 
That is going to be the funniest fucking shit in the history of the universe. Oh my god. It's going to be, like... Like, my... Uh, what's his face? Oh, wait a minute. He has- she has Magical Leaf, though, which actually hits no matter what, so... Uh, yeah, it's... My margin of error here is so unbelievably small. Kyoto has, uh, both, you know, Psychic Steel typing and incredibly high defenses. But, like... <laughs> I- I- I have to basically, like like, cross my heart and swear to die and hope that I get hit as few times as possible if I'm actually going to want to get through this. I mean, it, I, I still have no, like, real conception exactly of how powerful Miss Magus is because it's such a incredible powerhouse. It could actually probably still one-hit KO me, even with all the disadvantages that it's currently facing. Fuck, how did I not know that about EV sooner? Come on. I thought... Did, did Sand Attack work differently in previous generations? Did it used to be that Sand Attack would not hit Pokemon with Levitate and then that changed? Hold on a second. All right, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to use Hypnosis, whether this hits or misses. Well, we'll just have to find out. Okay. Of course. Ah, fuck. Currently reading up on Sand Attack. Um, now apparently, it always uh, affected flying type Pokemon uh, with the ability Levitate. Um, uh, oh well. Um, all right. Well, that's it for that. I mean, at this point, I don't really have much of a motivation to continue with the stream. I don't know. What do we want to do here? Do we want to... Just to kind of give you a taste of the Pokemon that I currently have waiting for me in my box. It's actually not that bad, but... As you can see, we have quite a few Pokemon that we can potentially kind of uh, fall back to and continue on with uh, in the wake of our entire team getting wiped. But I know that some people... Some people tend to be very adverse to the idea of continuing a Nuzlocke run when the, your entire team get wiped, when your entire team gets wiped, even if you still have some Pokemon waiting for you back in your Pokemon box that are not yet officially dead. You guys think that I should continue on with the Pokemon I have in my box, or do you think that I should just call it quits and start from scratch? I am going to go ahead, you, you guys can voice your opinions right now in the chat, but I'm actually going to go ahead and I'm going to... Um, ask people on Twitter to see what they think. You can find me on Twitter at Alex Cozina, A-L-E-X-K-O-Z-I-N-A. -E um, and yeah, we'll kind of go from there. Until next time, thank you for tuning into this very infuriating stream. Uh, remember, as always, you can catch these uh, streams live every... Uh, fuck. Fuck. Much like the beginning of this... <laughs> Much like the beginning of this stream, I just got completely tripped up. Uh, remember, as always, you can catch these streams live on Twitch every Monday and Thursday at 8.30 p.m. EST, and his VODs on YouTube every Wednesday and Saturday at 3.30 p.m. EST. Till next time, assuming there's a next time, my name is Alexander Kazina, aka Cozy Bear, and I hope that you all have a good night.